Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. practices particularly in industries of uh, where the petroleum refinery is uh, involved uh, that is the um, cuts that we use in our day to day life uh, from gasoline to diesel we need to know the origin and how it is processed to form this cuts so today we are going to talk about this origin of this particular cuts that is crude oil or rock oil because it comes out of the rocks that has been formed by mechanical and chemical disintegration over the years lying under the earth by bacteria and finally it uh, changes its form into an oil uh, which is further refined into different cuts and we are going to talk about the process how it is being refined or how it is being converted into different cuts. Uh, so basically my crude oil or my rock oil is first after extracting we are going to talk about the extraction process in a different video after extracting it is sent to a desalter the work of the desalter is basically to remove the salt from the crude oil now the source of the salt is clearly the rock that is that it is coming from uh, that is it will have NaCl it will have MgSO4 so magnesium salts uh, sodium salts all type of salts will be present in crude oil because it's coming it's having its uh, origin in the rocks so we have to remove that salt because if we do not remove that salt if we go to the distillation unit after that where we do the distillation of the crude oil there it can form scaling over the trays or on the surface of the distillation column which will be a very uh, bad phenomenon because if a scaling occurs there will not be a proper heat transfer or a mass transfer exchange in between the uh, gaseous and the uh, liquid stream which is unhealthy for the distillation process itself so uh, we have to remove Remove the salt from the crude oil. Now, uh, removing the salt from the crude oil, uh, we all know that uh, there is a mass transfer driving force acting when a material which has no, supposedly I am sending in a material A which has no traces of C and I am sending in a material of B which has high traces of C, there will be a clear mass transfer of C from B to A. Similar technology is applied here. We send in hot water which is free of salt, that is hot DM water which is free of any type of salt. So what happens is when crude oil comes in contact with this water, first of all oil and water cannot mix until it is churned out or mixed out in a pump or a mixer or an agitator system. It cannot mix together. Oil always floats over water. So prime advantage is these two solutions cannot mix. Secondly, water, what it does is it pulls out the salt from the oil and dissolves the salt in water. So the salt basically, salt basically transfers to water from oil. So oil loses the salt which gets transferred into water. Now why hot water? We know that the solubility increases as temperature uh, increases. So the solubility of the salt in the water increases as we increase the temperature. So the optimum temperature that is kept here is 100 degrees Celsius and the pressure in a desalter is always high. Now why this high pressure is sustained in a mm, uh, desalter? Why it is kept high? Because at 100 degrees Celsius when the water is coming in contact with the crude oil, now crude oil has C1 to C60 everything. Everything and anything that is there in the carbon system from C1 to C60 and maybe even above. Mm, uh, so C1 to C4 or C5 which has a tendency of, become, uh, of becoming a gas or to be in the gaseous state they when they come in contact with 100 degree celsius water they try to evaporate to keep them there we have to increase the pressure above them we have to increase the pressure above them so that the boiling point increases uh, of uh, the boiling point of the c1 to c4 increases and at that particular temperature c1 to c4 cannot form gas or they remain dissolved in the liquid state itself that is, it cannot evaporate at 100 degrees Celsius, so we have to maintain a high amount of pressure. That is why 
this water is always under high pressure and hot water to increase the solubility of the salts coming from oil into the water at 100 degrees Celsius. So it's kept 100 degrees Celsius. Then we undergo preheating. Now from in preheating, this 100 degrees Celsius is converted up to around 300 degrees Celsius in two steps. 300 to 330 degrees Celsius in two steps it is basically done. We are going to discuss about the two steps. But to discuss about that, we need to know what is happening in the distillation process. So first of all, it is coming at 100 from resalter and it is going out at 300 to 330 into the atmospheric distillation column as feed. So my feed is crude oil, which is C1 to C60, anything and everything. Now what happens is, when this flows down, we bring in steam here. This is a steam distillation process or also known as the steam stripping process. In industry, we do not keep a reboiler. This is a very important question that may be asked that why in a petroleum refinery, in the atmospheric distillation unit, that is ADU, why it is called atmospheric distillation unit? Because the pressure in the chamber is almost atmospheric pressure, that is one atmosphere or something like that, one to two atmospheric pressure. So um, at atmospheric pressure in the atmospheric distillation unit, why don't we use a reboiler? First of all, the uh, liquids that come at the bottom, that is the residual oil, is C60 around, C50, C60 around. So what happens is it can form a solid scaling on the reboiler itself which will again form a difficulty in heat transfer. So reboiler is not used due to the solid formation in atmospheric distillation unit. This is one of the primary reasons. The secondary reason is steam stripping is a better, better method because steam doesn't have any hydrocarbon within itself. It is pure steam. It has a stripping power that is similar to water. It can also pull out the hydrocarbon and can take along itself along the line. And whenever we condense, that is we condense in a condenser here, the water and the oil level separates from each other. So we use steam because oil and water, that is the hydrocarbon and the water, doesn't get intermixed with one another. So uh, this is the primary reason why steam stripping is used. Uh, to. Um, say it more authentically, I would say a fellow that used to boil at supposedly uh, 75 degrees Celsius will now boil at 53 degrees Celsius due to the inculcation of steam in the system because the steam is adding a mass transfer driving force which is decreasing the requirement of energy. That is at low energy it is going to strip out the, uh, uh, the hydrocarbon from the stream. You don't need to supply 75 degrees Celsius. At 53 degrees Celsius itself, the stream is going to, uh, steam is going to strip out the hydrocarbon from, from, the, uh, from the system. So what happens is uh, this liquid comes down and it comes in contact with the vapors and the lower cuts, that is C1 to C4, it gets enriched in the vapor state and it goes up. Now, at particular points, side stripping facilities are kept. That is, these cuts, fuel oil, diesel oil, kero cut, heavy naphtha, C5, C6, that is gasoline and C1 to C4 have different boiling points. As soon as their boiling point is reached, they are collected as the side products. As we go up, the uh, temperature keeps on decreasing. So the vapors that arrive from here, basically, the vapors that arrive from here, will keep on converting into liquid state as soon as this temperature is reached it is side stripped. That is supposedly the boiling point of this fuel oil is supposedly around uh, 300 degrees Celsius, supposedly. And this is coming at 400 degrees Celsius. So when it goes up, away from the reboiler, the heat is always dissipating in the system because it's going up and up and up. And in the around this point, it becomes 300. So what happens is, the fuel oil section, that is the C25, gets converted into liquid, whereas C1 to C24 remains as uh, in the gaseous state. So C25 condenses, becomes liquid, is side stripped. Similarly, as it goes up, it further loses heat, dissipates heat in the system. It goes as to supposedly 250 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of diesel, supposedly. Uh, so what happens? It again condenses and it is again stripped out. Whereas C1 to C22 remains as gas. As it proceeds further, C13 to C18 gets converted into liquid and is stripped out. Uh, C7 to C12 converted into liquid, stripped out. 
C5 C6 is converted into liquid stripped out and finally the gas that is going from the top doesn't convert to liquid goes as C1 to C4 which is further sent into a partial condenser to convert it into liquid and the gaseous state is sent to another treatment unit as C1 to C4 and the rest of it is sent back as reflux and the feed is continuously coming in so basically as it goes up it keeps on losing heat in multiple stages as it goes through the stage the uh, trays and it's collected at certain points that is the side stripping sections depending on the temperature it is reaching supposedly after traveling age height it reaches the boiling point of kerocut so i want to keep the side stripping of kerocut there so that when it reaches the boiling point it starts condensing it falls on the tray and there is a provision that we have kept as soon as this reaches the boiling point of kerocut it condenses and it falls on the tray and it is side stripped so this is what happens and the rest of the uh, uh, cuts remain as uh, vapor and goes up further it loses it and then again it is stripped this is the basically the system so what happens is firstly c1 to c4 being the lightest is collected as gas obviously c1 to c4 from the first tray, uh, tray at the tops uh, top uh, in the rectification section from the top c1 to c4 is collected that is light napped or wild gasoline also known as wild gasoline C5, C6, gasoline is the next cut that is obtained. Then heavy naphtha is obtained, that is C7 to C12. Thereafter, kero cut is obtained, that is kerosene and ATK, C30 to C18. Thereafter, diesel cut, C23 primarily. And finally, the fuel oil, C25. Now, apart from this, below C25, whatever is there, C28, C29, C30, up to C60, is collected as residual oil because these are having a boiling point of greater than 400 degrees Celsius, which means they do not form vapor on the first step here. Steam cannot strip them out because their boiling point is very high. They cannot form vapor. So they remain as liquid and stay as liquid here. So they do not have a tendency of going up. So as we can see, so you can clearly say that this material has the lowest boiling point, which means its tendency to become a gas or to remain as a gas is most and the tendency to become a liquid here is most and this easily doesn't form a gas or cannot be further separated. So C25 to C60 is basically the cut that goes into the residual oil which needs to be further separated because asphalt is C60 supposedly pitch that we use on roads and lube oil and paraffin wax and lubricating oil um, that is lube oil or paraffin wax these are essential for the candle industry and other paraffin industry uh, wax industry or lubricating industry so we need to collect them so we need to further separate this C25 to C60 we need to further break it and obtain C25 to C30 as a cut C30 to C40 as a cut and maybe after that whatever is left C60 may be served at the bottoms as a pitch or as a solid material whatever be it. So we need to further separate the C25 to C60 cut. Now to further separate it we need to decrease the boiling point that is from 400 degrees if it remains 400 degrees Celsius a steam stripping is not enough to uh, take out the hydrocarbon as vapors. So we need to find some other way to decrease the boiling point so that it easily boils at lower temperature. So what is done is we use a VDU that is vacuum distillation column. This was an atmospheric distillation column. This is the vacuum distillation column. So VDU as the name suggests vacuum distillation column. The pressure is maintained below atmospheric pressure uh, in this column. And this is necessarily a packed column. Though I have shown trays but this is necessarily a packed column because outside the column the pressure is atmospheric pressure and inside the column the pressure is below atmospheric pressure so if it is not a packed column it may crumble under pressure so it has to be a packed column with a low pressure now the low pressure is created by a steam jet ejector system now we know how a steam jet ejector system works it creates a negative pressure bearing a vacuum in the system so it creates a vacuum. Now a fellow that used to boil at 400 degrees Celsius will boil at 300 degrees Celsius at 0 0.5 atmospheric pressure. As the atmospheric, uh, as, the, at the, as the pressure decreases, the boiling point decreases. That is, residual oil which used to boil at 400 degrees Celsius at one atmospheric pressure, which didn't boil in this section because the boiling temperature was not reached, will boil in this sec uh, uh, section because I maintained the pressure as 0.1 atmospheric pressure. 
So a fellow that used to boil at 400 degrees Celsius at one atmospheric pressure will boil at 250 degrees Celsius supposedly at 0.1 atmospheric pressure. So the boiling point has decreased. Now we apply the same principle. We uh, steam strip it and we separate the C25 cuts from the top and thereafter C30 cuts from side stripping C40, C50 and whatever is left is asphalt mainly, that is pitch. That is mostly a liquid solid, a semi-liquid semi-solid state around C60 or C55, C60 around. So this is the work of a vacuum distillation column to maintain a vacuum, to maintain a negative pressure gradient so, so that it easily vaporizes the cuts which didn't vaporize in ADU, vaporizes in VDU. Now talking about preheating section we didn't discuss. What happens is it comes at 100 degrees Celsius, it goes at 300 degrees Celsius. These cuts that we are seeing here are all obtained at their boiling points as we have already discussed at their boiling point this cut are obtained. So these are at high temperatures, supposedly some are at 300, some are at 400, some are at 200, some are at 250 degrees Celsius. So all of these is basically heat exchanging the products, basically heat exchanging with the incoming feed and are converting increasing the temperature from 100 to 220 to 30 degrees Celsius, which is further preheated by some other means by preheated bands or something to 300 to 330 degrees Celsius. So 100 to 200 to 220 is being basically done by heat exchange, by preheating heat uh, it with the products, that is the product heat exchanging with the incoming feed of crude oil. And hence in turn increasing the temperature to 200 220 degrees Celsius and further it is sent. So a reboiler is not used in a petroleum refinery or crude oil refining system and uh, as we go up the tendency of gaseous formation increases, side stripping provisions are there, steam stripping is some principle that is followed, there is a steam carrying the vapors along with itself, it loses temperature, it is stripped, it loses further temperature till reaching the boiling point of this it is stripped, side stripping provision and finally C1 to C4 goes from the top. We see the sequence now to understand all the cuts, what are the uses of these cuts, you may refer to the uh, petroleum cuts uses an overview. We have already launched a video where everything is detailed and uh, discussion has been done in details like what is C1 to C4 or C5 to C6 used for. We have also understood the principle of video and how the vacuum is maintained by steam jet ejector system. It is a packed column so that it doesn't crumble under pressure and it easily vaporizes. So I think that sums up desalting unit, preheating unit, atmospheric distillation unit and vacuum distillation unit. These are the four units that are basically used in crude oil refining section. So if someone tells you what is the crude oil refining section all about, you will say desalting to remove the salt so that it doesn't form scaling, preheating to heat it to 300 to 330 degrees Celsius, which is the entry temperature for the atmospheric distillation unit, ADU atmospheric distillation unit or atmospheric distillation column, further the treatment of the bottoms of atmospheric distillation column, bottoms of atmospheric distillation column is treated in vacuum distillation unit and finally the bottoms are released. These are asphalt. This bottom is residual oil. And we are getting all the useful materials from side stripping here, from side stripping here. So this is how the crude oil refining is done. I think that's it for today. If you liked our video, give it a like, give it a big fat thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe to our channel. And that's it for today. Thank you.